Hello friends, this is Carmen. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. So glad you're here. Um, before we get started, just want to remind you uh, not to forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. Make sure you hit that notification bell. And if you enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Today, I am giving you the long-awaited uh, balcony tour. This will be for fall. I haven't showed you my balcony and what's going on out here for a little while, probably since the summer, I think, or before that. Um, but things are quiet right now because you know we're end of November a lot of things are in dormancy a couple of things are actually coming out of dormancy and a couple of things are flowering kind of late so let's get to it and I will give you a quick tour <music> You probably remember this from my uh, previous video. This is the walking Kalanchoe. It's doing okay. It's a bit of dormancy right now. It's not really its growing season, but it's it's doing really well. Um, no root rod on it or anything like that. So it's just hanging out back there. On my table here, I've got uh, Euphorbia, a zipper plant, I believe it is. Not a lot of growing either, but it's doing really well keeping its nice color. What is growing is this bonsai tree that I trained um, out of a variegated elephant bush with my jade elephant to keep it company there. So it's doing well. I'm thinking of trimming it a little bit to kind of train a little bit more because this right here, this branch is kind of growing out. So I may give that a little bit of a trim and my euphorbia dragon bones doing really well this is the one that i was thinking of entering into the um arizona cactus and succulent society show in the spring so i think i am going to enter that one and down here i've got madagascar palm nice green leaves And then up here, I've got my hanging plants. Right up there, uh, fish hooks, string of fish hooks. I've got a couple of different um, elephant bush there. A variegated elephant bush and a regular elephant bush that I've got growing in this uh, cocoa liner. And my succulents, at least the trailing ones, really do love these cocoa liners. Um, I think it just, you know, they let them dry out quickly, they don't retain any water at all, and uh, so they really like it. <coughs> Got my Senecio Jacobsonii there, this is the variegated one, nice and lush. The temperatures right now overnight here in Phoenix, Zone 9, um, they have not been getting below 45 degrees. So I have not been covering any of my succulents. It's my string of bananas there. Um, and they've been doing just fine. Once they start getting down below 40, down to freezing, then I will cover them with um, some sheets or frost cloth. It's my begonia, begonia, <laughs> bougainvillea, excuse me. Uh, my bougainvillea here. Got some, it's kind of reaching for the sun a little bit there. And I have not planted anything down at the bottom yet. I will in the spring to kind of fill out that planter. And here's one of my favorite planters here. It's got all sorts of succulents in it and some cuttings that I've received. Um, Look at this Kalanchoe marginata. Look at the margins on that. Isn't that just gorgeous? Love this plant. It's doing some growing. So many of these are, as you can see here, ghost plant. Got this one here from um, Leaf and Clay. Leaf and Clay, I believe. But you would think that this one may be dormant right now, but it's not. It's got some growth there. And here in Neon Breakers. In Euphorbia rubra, beautiful there. Rosie is barking at the neighbors that are moving. I have been trying to film this balcony tour for like a week now. Living in an apartment, it's hard. <laughs> Here's the Kalanchoe creams, scalloped, cream scallops, I think it's called. 
and um, it's kind of going into dormancy. I got this one not too long ago from Home Depot. So you can see some of the color there. Looks like I may need some watering. I've been cutting back on my watering quite a bit because it is winter time. I'm not getting any direct sun on my balcony right now because I'm north facing. So depending upon what kind of pot they're in, terracotta versus a ceramic or plastic, I will um, determine how I water them. Overall, the water is going to um, evaporate much slower than it would in the summertime when I got 100 degree weather to deal with. But when the highs are in the um, low 70s, I cut back to about every 10 to 14 days. Now what is blooming and coming out of dormancy are these aeoniums. I'm still not completely sure what type of aeoniums these are. These were given to me as cuttings from my friend Julie here in Arizona. And look the brilliant color that they're getting. Sorry for shaking there. But look at the brilliant color they're getting. And you can tell they're coming out of dormancy because when I got them in the summertime, they were flat. All the leaves were flat. And now they're just perking up, they're separating, they're growing, and it's just loving it and they're in this little basket. Here's another cutting that I planted recently. These are um, Ripsalis, and I'll put the name on there. But it's a Ripsalis that I got from my friend Nell in Puerto Rico. So here I have my, or well, the majority of my phylums. A lot of these are cuttings that I've been growing the last few months, and they're doing well. They're pretty much just hanging out, um, and many are already taking root. If you tug on it a little bit, if you tug on it a little bit, they, uh, they don't come up, so that means they're taking root, which is fine. I just want them to take root right now. So I've got a Ripsalis here, Orchid Cactus, my Rickrack and Fishbone Cactus, a couple of Stapelias here, some more Ripsalis, Mistletoe Cactus that I just got. Oh, I forget what this one is, but this is a... Mm, I'll put it on the screen there because the name escapes me right now. And belt grape, that's doing well. And I've got my coral aloe back there. I'm going to need to repot that along with this peanut cactus because they're starting to outgrow their containers. And this is a Monstros Opuntia Montecarthia, Montecartha Monstros variegated. This is a beautiful plant, and you know that it is growing by those little pink buds there. And just a little, a little um, fairy garden there. And over here, I've got a uh, majority of my euphorbias, crown of thorns there that, believe it or not, is still giving out flowers and also growing those branches. Here's another euphorbia um, crested one that I received. As a, um, it wasn't a cutting, it already had roots on it, so it's doing really well. I think it, it may be a um, euphorbia trigona, not the rubric kind, but it looks different because it's crested. Here's another crested plant, which I love crested uh, succulents and cacti, Eve's Needle. This has gotten really big in the last, well, I've had it for more than a year. It's just gotten so big. Lots of new growth on that this year. And my Euphorbia mammillaria variegated Indian corn cob. That's getting a few new growth on there, which is kind of unusual for this time of year for November for it, but that's good. And then we get into some mallows here, a little bit of folia. And I can't remember the name of this aloe, I apologize, but I will put it on the screen. It's another dish with another aloe, a little grep 
petal them down there and these uh, Kalanchoe panda uh, panda uh, plant it's got had some sun scorching there so that's what those marks on the leaves are a little bit of sun scorching and this big guy here is aloe um, coral and look how big it's getting it's just like an octopus it's getting so big here's another euphorbia crown of thorns this one has the flowers it's in, like a bush variety and it has yellowy creamy flowers on it and here we have the cirrus monstros curiosity plant and this definitely is curious the way that it grows in with those little they're not they're soft they're not really pokey so it's definitely strange and here is a euphorbia I'm not quite sure what kind it is it is a cutting that I received from Jalyn um, and it's setting roots so I think it's just in dormancy right now it'll it'll definitely pick up in the springtime here's my totem pole cutting that I had uh, one of the little babies that it had attached to it broke off. I bumped into it and broke it off, but I've rooted it in there and it's got another baby back there. And I've also tossed in some leaves in here to um, propagate in here because there was just, you know, a lot of space in this container. So I just threw some in there and they're propagating in there. And here is one of, uh, actually I've got more than one fire sticks, but this is one of the bigger ones in this container, and it has some um, ghost plants back there, trailing elephant bush plant, and I noticed earlier when I was watering, it has a sedum, some type of sedum back there, but look at it, I can't remember what it is, I don't even remember planting it, um, but it's got that rosy tinge to it, and it's even getting some little teeny tiny flowers, so that's good. Agave is doing well. Pink butterflies here. I have propagated this plant so much. You can see it had originally like three stalks, and I would cut them, callus them over, and replant them. And it's just really, really filled in the pot here. Oh, this one is, of course I don't have a, I'll put the name on there, but I got this one at the Succulent Show last year, per, Peridoria, something like that, and here's one of my bigger sticks on fire, more like ember, it doesn't really have the red, but it has the yellowing goldish color to it. And down here in my frog container, my aloe is still doing really, really well. It's just growing so much. Look at all those babies in there. So I don't have any plans of taking this out. It's going to stay in the frog. Okay, moving over to this shelving unit here. And I will leave links down below to where I've gotten these shelving units. Super easy to put together, that one and the three-tier one. I could not have nearly the, the amount of plants I have on my balcony without these. They've really helped out. So here I've got some Kalanchoes, Silver Spoons, and Fang. This one's got a little bit of growth, but some of the leaves are kind of turned in. It may be just wanting some more sun. And then these are a bunch of different cuttings that I recently um, potted up. Some of them are doing really well as far as growing. Some different Kalanchoes and elephant bush there, variegated. This is a type of Crassula. So it's doing really well in this pot here. Down here I have this crested um, Grabbed a petal in Paraguays, the ghost plant basically, you may know it as. And I love this plant. It actually was in a much larger pot and in the center was this, uh, 
crested one. So I separated all the ones around it and potted this one by itself. And it's doing really well. Look how much growth it's getting. And some more aloes. Uh, actually, that's um, Graptivaria, little warty. Aloe um, partridge press, I think. Aloe gemzar. Blizzard. And. Oh, who are you? Pink blush. So here are the few lithops that I have. I just watered them this morning. Went ahead and watered them because none of them are splitting, so it is okay to water them. Um, I've had, I believe it's a cat that has been coming into my balcony. And the other day I found some of these uprooted. Uh, one of them half eaten. <laughs> so I think it's a cat that's doing that. But otherwise they're doing okay. My baby toes there. Just watered that too because it looked a little shriveled. But otherwise it's good. Split rock. Love the texture on that. So cool. Show you this one, propeller plant. Cool, isn't it? I love the texture. The, just the look of this plant is so cool. Very nice. And then down here, this is the other place I wanted to put a shelving unit, something narrow to hold some more plants and cuttings and stuff. But this one here, these are my um, San Pedro's cactus cuttings those tall ones there and then these are the recent additions to the family as far as my last um, Mountain Crest Gardens order which was the Ultimate Succulent Club order came with these cacti so I put them in here because they all have the same type of watering requirements so they'll do fine here overwintering there and then here I have this shelving unit. We'll start at the top. Right up here is probably my pride and joy with this dangling uh, elephant bush. Look how long that is and getting longer. When I first moved in here 18 months ago, it was probably right here. It's grown a good at least a foot longer and going. And I have on top there, I did add um, a variegated one along with another uh, cutting of the uh, sticks on fire to give it some height and Kalankoe copper spoons another little war tea and this is a Cressula springtime I'm really hoping this one um, blooms in the springtime because it has some really unique flowers really pretty so we'll see and then down here zebra plant. I had this one inside and I brought it back outside because it was really really light colored here and here in the new growth and when I brought it out now it's getting darker. It's not, well it looks wet because I just watered it, but it's not mushy or root rot or anything. It's just because I brought it out to more light. And back there I've got my uh, bird cage. I may do redo this one in the spring. These plants, these um, string of buttons and elephant bush have been in here quite a while so I may do something in the spring with that. Here's my latest aloe that I added and look it's getting ready to flower which is late in the season for aloes. So, it's nice and this is a serious Monstros, I believe. I'll look it up and put it on there. But it's just a funky looking plant. Domino cactus. My uh, donkey's ears are growing. All the new growth there. And these are the other aeoniums that are starting to wake up. You see how the petals are separating and it's getting that really pretty tinge. So those are the other cuttings that I had of the aeonium. Down here, um, I thought this was a flapjack plant cutting, but I'm not so sure because the new leaves are coming in kind of curled. So let me know down in the comments below, friends, what you think this is. 
Let's see. I'm not so sure. And key lime pie. Little, little scarce there, but it is getting new growth there. So, and graptocetums there. There's another graptocetum. This is a tiny, tiny aeonium kiwi that I'm trying to save, and it's got some cuttings of some string of buttons. There's my little pot there. This is also another Cirrus monstros. Here in this little, it's a Campbell soup mug. This has the um, variegated elephant bush. This is a, also, oops, sorry, um, a baby from the propeller plant and a Semper Vivum. Not sure what kind. Here's some more cuttings that from now that I have potted up some aloes. Looks like a mono, another monocarpia, monocarpa, monocartha, <laughs> um, variegated. Grabbed a petal, I believe. So they're taking root, doing well. Ox tongue, very, very slow go grower, this guy. But it's giving off babies. It's just really unique as far as the texture and it's hard. And old man cactus, thimble cactus, um, even ball, I think it is. Let's see. Golden pin cushion. Golden pin cushion on that one. And here's my colander where I kind of have a bunch of different things as far as a, a thimble cactus there and a firebird aloe in the back, peanut cactus. And this right here is a um, leaf propagation of the key lime pie plant. And um, it finally, I finally took the dead leaf off and it's growing on its own. So that's good. Here is Aeonium Swart Cob. It's back along with some string of buttons. You see again how it's waking up and it's just separating. It's gorgeous. And then I've got my collection of different Opuntias here. They're pretty much dormant right now for the winter. So I have not been watering them because um, you water these right now, boy, it is sure to root rot. I already lost one of these pads to root rot, and this one I managed to save, but I am not going to be watering anymore. And then finally down here in my little red wagon, my little uh, fairy swing there, some bunny ear cactus, some more thimble cactus, and aloe firebird back there too. It's one of my favorite arrangements. Here is my leaf propagation. And it's just a tray that I had purchased. I had something else in it and I kept the tray and uh, now do the leaf propagations in it. There's another keen lime pie one there, but to be honest with you, I don't even know what half of these are. This is a little kind of a topsy turvy I'm trying to save. But I just kind of, I just watered them today. Otherwise I leave them alone and they just do their thing. I, f I have found that if I over love them, they will die. <laughs> and then I am trying to do, these are some bulbs, some paper white bulbs that I did last year in water. Put them in some uh, soil here and they're starting to come up. And some freesia bulbs that I had from last year too. And this is a snake plant. Um, bird's nest that I'm trying to save. The bottom root rotted, but I was able to cut off the top and it's now starting to take root. So I have that out here. Trying to save. And this is just where I keep my soil and stuff. It's not the fanciest, but you know what? In an, an apartment balcony, you don't have a lot of room. So I would love to get a new potting bench, but this works for right now. Well, there you have it, friends. That is my fall tour of my garden, my balcony garden. I hope you enjoyed it. Not a whole lot going on, but things are living, and that's what I go for. As long as you're not dying, 
um, <laughs> that's a good thing. So things are sleeping, some things are waking up, and some things are late bloomers. So that's the way of, of gardening, I guess. Thanks so much, friends, for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, again, please do give it a thumbs up. Rosie and Sammy send their regards. Sam, hi, boy. What a good boy you are. He's getting so much better as far as obedience. <laughs> and then Rosie just needs a haircut. <laughs> but thanks so much, friends. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe because I am trying to put out weekly videos, trying very hard to do them twice a week, but um, definitely weekly. Thanks so much, friends. Have a blessed day.